What's happening guys, it's Shane here. And in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the hardest college degrees. We're gonna be going over the top 10 hardest majors in my opinion. Now this is a video that I did last year and I didn't think it was gonna be that popular, but it absolutely blew up. And everybody had an opinion in the comment section. Most of it was positive. A lot of people offered some great points and a lot of people got really triggered. But this is going to be an updated video for 2022 because there were a lot of comments that made great points. And the truth is there were some degrees I should have included that I didn't. So with that being said, there will be new degrees on this list. So sit back, relax, Relax, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below, and let's get right into it. Number 10 on the list is going to be mathematics. So this one did make it on last year's list, although it was a lot higher. Um, and the truth is, uh, this is a very difficult major just because of the fact that most people don't like math and are not very good at it. However, if you are somebody who likes math or you're really good at it, this might not be as hard, but still it's going to be relatively difficult. Now, number nine on the list is going to be chemistry. And I think everybody knows what this one is. If you major in chemistry, you will have to take a bunch of general science classes as well as physics and calculus but some of the chemistry classes are very difficult so for instance organic chemistry is famous for being extremely difficult and at a higher level physical chemistry is probably even harder so with chemistry it is going to challenge you somewhat conceptually but there's also a lot of memorization that is involved in you know chemistry especially if you do biochemistry or physical chem and on top of that you will be spending a ton of time in the lab doing lab work and then afterwards you get to write up those lovely lab reports and the average time spent preparing for class every week for a chemistry major is about 18 hours Number eight on the list is going to be mechanical engineering. So mechanical engineering is one of the more flexible types of engineering. There's just a ton of different things that they can do. Whereas if you get into the more specific ones like petroleum engineering, for instance, you're somewhat limited in terms of the different jobs that you can apply for. So the reason I included this on here, although it's not the hardest engineering degree that's gonna be on this list, is because you do have to know a wide variety of things. Now, I'm not saying that mechanical engineers are jacks of all trades they're definitely specialists you know they do know a lot but the fact that they have to learn so much about so many different things shows that they do have to have a very wide range of skill sets now in the last video i went into so much detail i talked about how much they studied every week uh, people's iqs uh, all kinds of different objective measures and people in the comment section just like <laughs> It was funny because they were like, oh, you didn't include this, 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 and this, and this. And like, it's impossible to include everything. The truth is there are some majors that are just objectively generally more difficult. That means that, you know, if you had a million people take major A versus a million people taking major B, one of the majors would be much harder on average than the other one. In specific situations, there's certain majors that might be really easy for some people. So you might be able to breeze through a mechanical engineering engineering major, but you'd have trouble if you took English or music. So I just wanted to kind of comment on that because I did get quite a few comments along those lines. Number seven on the list is going to be architecture. Now, the interesting thing about this one is you really have to have a very well-rounded skill set. Not only do you have to be good at the technical, mathematical, analytical, left brain stuff, but you also have to be pretty good at the right brain stuff as well because architecture is relatively creative. And it's honestly pretty rare to find people that can do both. Now, when it comes to study hours, this one is actually number one on the list at about 22 study hours per week. That's crazy. So if you are going purely off of how long people study per week on average, this one is number one. So yeah, architecture definitely keeps you busy. Now, the truth is a lot of majors will give you a ton of busy work and it's not necessarily difficult. It's just very time consuming. And so that's why even though there are some on this list where people study more hours per week, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's as hard as some of the other ones. Number six on the list is not technically a degree, but it's taking certain classes that you have to take in order to apply to med school. And this is done in order to cover all of the science and laboratory requirements, and it's known as the pre-med track. Now, the thing about getting into med school is it's very difficult. So a lot of students have to apply to at least 20 different med schools in order to get accepted. I have personally seen people apply four years in a row and get rejected four years in a row, and this is multiple people. Now, the average GPA of people who 
actually get accepted to med school is about 3.71, which is really good. I mean, that's the average person who gets accepted to med school. But on top of that, you have to take a very difficult test called the MCAT, which takes, you know, months to study for usually. And many people end up taking it multiple times. And on top of that, med schools want to see that you're involved. So you have to do a lot of community service and join clubs. And if that wasn't enough, a lot of them also want to see that you have shadowed doctors for hundreds of hours in many cases. Oh, and did I also mention that a lot of med schools also want to see that you have worked in the medical field. So I think you get where I'm coming from here. You have to not only study really hard, but you have to do so much extra stuff in order to get into med school. It's extremely difficult. And what makes it even more difficult is the stupid plus minus system that most universities have. At most universities, an A minus is a 3.70. So when you see that the average student who gets admitted to med school has a 3.71, that means the average student basically got all A's. And that's just the average student. That means 50% of them are smarter than that. And they also take lots of hard science classes. They usually have to take like calculus, physics, and some of the other tough ones as well. So yeah, I think you get my point here. Pre-med track is very difficult. Number five on the list is aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering is all about things that fly through the air, whether they be rockets, planes, helicopters, jets, etc. And as you can imagine, since this has only been around for the last 100 years, this is pretty advanced technology and it's not the easiest stuff in the world. I mean, as an aerospace engineer, you're almost a rocket scientist if you think about it. So yeah, not going to get into too much detail here, but aerospace engineering, uh, I think it goes without saying, very, very difficult stuff. Number four on the list is going to be another engineering degree, and that is chemical engineering. Now, on last year's list, I basically grouped all of the engineering degrees together, and I realized that's not very fair, especially after some people kind of left comments. Not all of the engineering degrees are as hard as some of the other ones. And chemical engineering is one of the most difficult ones. It's notorious for being incredibly difficult. In fact, many would actually argue that this one is the hardest. It is number two when it it comes to the total amount of hours studied per week at about 19.6. And this one, of course, gets very deep into engineering concepts combined with chemistry as well as a lot of physics. However, there is one engineering degree that I think is a little bit more difficult. Number three on the list is going to be electrical engineering. And this is, in my opinion, the most difficult pure engineering degree. This one is very different than all of the other engineering degrees because you spend a ton of time learning about electronics and circuits. With a lot of majors like civil engineering, for instance, you can physically touch and look at and feel what you're learning about. Same with mechanical engineering, etc. Whereas electrical engineering, it's pretty much all up here. It's completely abstract. So for instance, you can't really see current moving through a circuit. That's just not something that you can see. So you have to be able to visualize it in your head. So this major is notoriously abstract and very difficult to understand conceptually. But to be honest with you, these top five degrees are all really difficult. So, you know, if you argue chemical engineering is harder than electrical, I totally understand. Number two on the list is going to come as a surprise because this one was number one last year, and that is physics. Now, I went over this last year, but physics, you know, you do study quite a bit, well over 18 hours per week. Uh, but on top of that, physics is just known for being incredibly difficult. A lot of the concepts in physics, you do have to basically think about in your head. So it's relatively abstract. You know, you can't really see electrons, for instance. But the reason I put this one as number one last year is because physics has the highest average IQ out of all of the majors. So basically, Basically, the average IQ is 133 for physics majors, which is almost like a borderline genius. And an IQ score of 130 means you're probably in the top 2% of intelligence. So basically, that means that the average physics major is a borderline genius. Now, there is one on the list that ranked higher. And the reason I looked into this one is because somebody left a comment on that last video, and that is going to be engineering physics. Yes, this is where you basically combine engineering, which there's a ton of very difficult engineering majors with physics, which last year was the most difficult major. So yeah, I don't think much needs to be said there. Engineering and physics combined, engineering physics, 
doesn't get much harder than that. Now, this is a relatively rare degree as well. Only about 601 people graduated with a bachelor's in this one last year. And that's honestly probably because not very many people can. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it. I'm sure everyone is going to have an opinion. Uh, just leave it down in the comments below. Uh, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead gently tap that like button hit the subscribe button ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts comments criticisms etc that you have on the video and i will see you next time